So in the spring, it was a lake. This year, and then um, basically through the next spring, it's still a lake. But uh, during the summer of 2010, uh, it had dried up. So we did this field work in the fall. And you can see, it's, at this point, it's still, there's still a little bit of water um, perching in there, but it was pretty much uh, bone dry. We, um, you can see, even on, on, on Google Earth, the, the image that was taken it was actually dry. Um, and this is the river is over on the right here. So this is what this thing looks like when you're trying to, it, it's, can in theory be operated by one person where you uh, the computer talks to the uh, antenna and uh, all the data is stored and you have it hooked up like this. And this guy was pretty adept with that. And mostly we usually have more than one person. It's uh, you're sending a radio signal into the ground and some something that that's uh, reflecting that signal back, uh, sends it back to the receiver. You actually get many reflections in a single, uh, in a single wave going out from different depths. And the uh, amount of energy that comes back depends partly on the properties or on the change in what we call dielectric uh, constant in the material. And, but in the field, you, you, you kind of just do a simple uh, collection of the data. Um, there's a, a program that collects the data and shows it to you as you're going to make sure that uh, you, you're actually getting some reflections that uh, you're, um, you've got the right battery strength and so forth. You don't do a lot of analysis in the field. There are some things that you can uh, do while you're operating, but mostly you're just storing the data. At any given point, uh, so as you pull radar, uh, you, you call that a profile, and then at any given point where the, the wave is coming back to your receiver, you call that a trace. And the base is basically a, a, a wiggly line, and each little uh, deflection in that is um, <clears throat> some change in the uh, dielectric constant, or um, for various reasons, you might get more than one wiggle from one uh, big change. So that's why we end up processing the data after um, we get it collected. The, the initial file stores it at, in time units, nanoseconds. It's coming back really fast, and it's in uh, time units. And then you can convert the time units to depth if you know the velocity at which the way it moves through the material. 